Hello aviators, welcome back. So when it comes to flight reviews, a flight review happens every two years with a flight instructor to verify that you can still fly to the level of your certificate. You can still perform the maneuvers to the level of your certificate, but also that you still know the knowledge related to all of the things you had to pass on your private pilot or commercial pilot test. So typically a flight review starts with some kind of oral. Uh, and if you have one coming up, you should do our mock oral, the mock oral we have in our ground school app to see kind of where your knowledge is because that's how the whole thing starts. Uh, and then I actually have a concrete plan for how I execute them, but before I tell you what that is, because uh, I don't know how everybody in the world does it, let's talk about some of the highlights that I'm almost certain people will hit. After all, loss of control is the leading cause of aircraft accidents, so I can almost guarantee things like slow flight, things like stalls, things like steep turns, those kinds of things will be on your flight review. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Final Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Alright you guys, when we're, uh, when we're out here with, on flight reviews, we're going to go through the normal suite of maneuvers to make sure that you can control the airplane. Remember, loss of control is the leading cause of aircraft accidents, but you will definitely see steep turns, you will definitely see slow flights, you'll most likely see stalls, and then we'll move right into emergencies. Uh, simulated engine failures, emergency descents, and that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go through all of those maneuvers here because they are uh, very well laid out in our Ground School app, which is now available on the iPhone as a free two-week trial if you get it before the end of the year. But I do want to point out a couple of the finer points. Like, remember, for example, that any time you're flying in slow flight or preparing to stall, right, when you're flying at a slow airspeed, but you're holding your altitude, then you have a high pitch attitude, you can't see over the nose, you absolutely have to know where your Lindbergh reference is and how to use it. In slow flight these days, they're gonna wanna see 55 knots with no stall horn. So there you go, there's 55. Right rudder is what we're looking for here. Can you use enough right rudder so that you stop that action from happening? Notice in your Lindbergh reference, you saw all that yaw and roll. You can't see over the nose, so you have to use your Lindbergh reference here. If you're unfamiliar with that, you should definitely download the Ground School app. But the other thing we're looking for in slow flight is to make sure that you're not dying death by a thousand cuts, right? You're not just going down at 50 feet per minute or 100 feet per minute. And what we'll do if we see that happening is just stall. I mean, take time. <laughs> we'll just delay, right? I'll just sit here and tell you to turn this heading and that heading. And if I see that you are unable to control your altitude because you're unaware that you're descending at 50 feet per minute, then I know we have a problem. Uh, by the way, I think the solution for that, for anybody that's out there wanting to practice this, is practice doing it intentionally. So stay in the slow flight configuration of 55 knots. Allow the aircraft to descend at 100 or 250 feet per minute, and then see if you can't fix that with power and right rudder. Remember, any time the power comes in, you're going to push a little bit of right rudder so that there's no yaw on your Lindbergh reference. And you get that climb going. See if you can now climb at 100 feet per minute right, at 55 knots. And if you can uh, control the climb and the descent while maintaining an airspeed and a heading, you're doing just fine. And we would probably move on to stalls. Uh, remember that the Lindbergh reference is equally important in stalls as it is in slow flight, and all of that stuff is covered in the Ground School app. Okay, we also want to make sure that you're fresh on your emergency procedures. Uh, for my part, I want you safer walking out the door uh, than you were <laughs> when you walked in. So definitely things like simulated engine failures. Uh, I like to go through cabin fire because that requires an emergency descent. Uh, it's a very practical risk mitigation maneuver uh, that you should be proficient with and I don't think we give it enough time during the private. Uh, and I'll actually ask you to do things like, you know, pull out the flight, the, the fire extinguisher, or if you have one, you know, don a smoke hood. All right, now let's talk about some of the finer points in the emergency procedures because you're definitely going to see simulated engine failures, but one of the things I like to do with flight reviews is bring in a little realism. So I would have you in the emergency descent. We'd be 45 degrees of bank. We would be pitching quite steeply. You'd be telling me about which 
field you're going to land at when we get to the bottom of this, but I'm also going to require that while you're dividing your attention, you're able to reach down and literally pull the fire extinguisher out of its case. So if you haven't practiced that uh, and you're coming for a flight review with me, make sure that you can do that. You'd be surprised. Some Cirrus pilots I know literally have it down by their left ankle and there's not a chance they're pulling that thing out in flight. Okay, but this is probably the most important part, and this is my two cents on it. If you didn't get homework, right? So if, you, if your flight instructor doesn't know anything about you walking in, and this is primarily for CFIs out there, you should have that student sit down and plan a cross-country flight and use that opportunity to go through any oral items you want to discuss. Takeoff performance, regulations, chart symbology, um, you know, performance calculations, any of those things happen in the planning of a cross-country flight. Uh, and for the most part, if I were you the CFI, I would be teaching where I needed to, but I'd also be making a lot of notes, things we're going to come to later. Then I would start by flying that flight. This gives the CFI a chance to kind of sit back Back and again, make an assessment. Where do we need to go to work? What things are nice to have? What things are need to have in the sense that they impact safety, right? So kind of formulating a plan. And at the end of that, you can sit down and have breakfast or lunch uh, and you can sort of talk through the agenda. Okay, here are the things I noticed in the first half of the day. I will, you know, I'll give you some homework to fill the knowledge holes, but you know, after lunch here, let's roll up our sleeves and go to work on rudder control, Lindbergh reference, uh, you know, uh, flap usage during go arounds, uh, your ground drift during patterns, whatever it is that we as CFIs have seen that you need work on. All right. That's why it's, you know, it's so important not to wait two years to do this. I recommend having a good relationship with a solid CFI that you see maybe once every six months. Uh, use products like our Ground School app where we have knowledge recall features. We have a flying section with tap target evaluations. We have mock orals. All of this ongoing like sort of preventative maintenance will make sure that you are the best and uh, most confident pilot you can be. Make sure you get a, your free two-week trial of our Ground School app. Our instrument course is imminent. You should just get a year subscription because the instrument course is coming and there's so much content in there already. Also, remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. And until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.